Hey everyone, so picking up right where we left off in the last lecture, we are going to jump into building our flow here. Before we do, I just want to convert this lead and confirm that our potential value field mapping is working. So you can see I have a lead here, so you'll want to create a lead and you'll want to enter the potential value. Uh, it could be anything, so I just put in 5000, but make sure there's a value in this field. And we're going to press convert on our lead. And we're just testing the field mapping here. And I want to create an opportunity. So that all looks good and I'll press convert. This will convert behind the scenes, creating three new objects, and we're going to open up the opportunity object. I'm going to click on the details. And we see that the opportunity does have a potential value field and that it was mapped successfully so that the 5000 from the lead came over to the opportunity. And that's great. So what our flow needs to do, because we couldn't, our, our mapping, we couldn't map the, the custom potential value field to the standard amount field. And that's what the sales team wants. So our flow needs to bridge that gap. And that's what we're gonna go build. So let's click on the setup icon, press setup, and we'll navigate to the flow builder. And hopefully you're old hat at this by now. Just type in flow to the quick find and select flows. And we're gonna make a new flow. So we'll press new flow. And if you had to guess what sort of flow type based on the three most common ones that I described before is what we'll use, what do you think it would be? Do we wanna guide users through a screen flow? Do we wanna schedule this flow at a particular time? Or do we wanna launch this flow when a record is created, updated, or deleted? I'll give you a second. I hope that you were thinking that we would want to do a record triggered flow. And if you were, you're absolutely right. The reason that we want to do that is because we need to kick this flow off flow off whenever an opportunity record is created. So that was a good hint there and uh, a good reason to kind of get familiar with these descriptions because they'll give you some clues as to what sort of flow type you want to use. Honestly, I think the record triggered flow is kind of the workhorse of Salesforce flows. This is probably the most common flow type. So if you're never, if you aren't sure, um, you could probably go backwards and uh, just rule out. It's like, do I need a screen? Nope. Do I need to kick this off at a specific time? Nope. Okay. Then it's going to be a record trigger flow most of the time. With all that said, we'll press create. And record triggered flows are somewhat different from screen flows. And, you know, the, the primary difference obviously is that you can't use a screen in a record trigger flow and that they're uh, triggered at different times. The second difference is that with a screen flow, you get to jump right into building. With a record triggered flow, we actually have to configure the start of the flow. And so this is the trigger. This is uh, how and when the flow will kick off. And the first part of this process is to pick an object. And if you had to guess what object will be created in Salesforce that will trigger this flow to fire. I hope you said opportunity, and that's exactly right. We're going to kick this flow off when a brand new opportunity is created. Um, that way we can update that opportunity with a field value. The next step after selecting the object is to configure the trigger and we get four different options here. In this case, we'll just select a record is created. Um, you can read the other options. The, the thing to remember when you're setting up a record triggered flow is that you want to uh, restrict or pare down uh, the number of times that the flow fires. So we want to be really specific and really filter out any time that the flow shouldn't fire. The reason we do that is because flows consume resources on the Salesforce backend. And so by limiting the number of times that the flow fires, we limit the number of times that um, we're consuming those resources. And you can see that principle kind of spelt out here from Salesforce itself. So, you know, they say uh, set specific entry conditions to reduce the number of records that trigger the flow and the number of times that the flow is run. And then they explain why. So based on that principle, we'll just kick this off when the opportunity fires. And then what we can do is we can set some entry conditions. So pretty similar to how we uh, worked with get records and create and update records, we can define conditions here and we can define you know, different logic behind the conditions. For the purpose of this video, we'll just select all conditions are met. And what this allows us to do is uh, pick specific fields on the object we're working with, in this case, the opportunity, and then we can use those fields um, and these corresponding operators to set values or um, criteria that need to be met in order for the flow to run. So in this case, uh, 
a brand new opportunity is going to be created. And the filter that I think would be helpful is that the potential value field, so you can see I typed in potential, and I'll select potential value. And I'm going to say, selecting from the operators list here, uh, that the potential value is null, which means is blank or doesn't have a value. And then we're going to say um, false. And so I know that I probably went through that a little bit quickly. Uh, every time you pick a field, you get to select an operator. So we have an equals, does not equal, greater than, less than, you know, et cetera. Not every operator will apply to every field. So in this case, you know, like, um, I think most of these operators would work. But if you had a text field, for example, like the name of the opportunity, it wouldn't really make sense to say that the name is greater than, you know, like a number, like that wouldn't really work. But they'll give you all the operators either way. And then for specific operators, like the, the is null operator, um, Salesforce will actually provide you, I'm going to remove that false value, but by clicking on the value section, Salesforce will provide you some, you know, true false values in order to make the definition of the criteria easier. And so in this case, we'll say false. And the way this reads is that the potential value is blank. And then we're saying that that's not true, which means that it does have a value. And then the final thing that we need to pick when we set up this start screen is what we optimize the flow for. And there's two options here. There's one called fast field updates, and then there's one called actions and related records. And if you read the little description here, you can see that uh, the first one, the fast field updates, update fields on the record that triggers the flow to run. So that could be any record. In this case, it's updating fields on the opportunity that triggered the flow to run. And this is a high performance flow that runs before a record is saved. So you might hear uh, in your flow building career, or you might need to answer this question for an interview that um, like, what is a before save flow? And a before save flow is a flow that optimizes for fast field updates. It's high performance and the Salesforce sort of uh, marketing behind it says that it runs 10 times faster, which I don't know if, if that's a fact, but that's what they say. The opposite side is the actions and related records. And this updates any record and can perform actions like sending an email. So if we were updating a record that wasn't the one that kicked off this flow, let's say instead of updating the opportunity, we wanted to go update a contact re related to the account that this opportunity was associated with, um, we would pick this actions and related record uh, optimization. This uh, flow is more flexible, as it says, and it runs after the record is saved. So this is what's called an after save flow. And so that's how you pick before save or after save. And so if that comes up in an interview or you need to know that, um, this is where you configure that. We'll get a lot more experience with that as we go throughout the course. The main distinction or the main way that I think about which one to pick is if you need to update records that aren't the one that kicked off the flow. So if you need to update other records or you need to send to actions, you pick the after save flow. Otherwise, the before save flow is, is generally the preference. So I'm going to press done. And we've now configured the start element uh, to our flow. I'm going to press the save button. And we'll briefly talk about the naming convention of flows. So in our first screen flow, I just called it our first screen. Uh, typically, when you're building a record triggered flow, what you'll see is that you type in the name of the object that the flow kicks off on. And then you can do a colon or a dash. I like dashes, doesn't make a difference. And then you want a short, concise name that describes what the flow is doing. And so I'll type in uh, potential value sets amount. And then if you want to provide an additional description here, you certainly can. And maybe we'll do that. We'll say when an opportunity, I'll just abbreviate that to op is created, the potential value sets the amount field. And it's really important to have a, a descriptive label here. And the reason that it's important is because on the, the flow screen, um, there's a big list of flows that we've seen a couple times throughout the course. And Salesforce has now required every new automation be built as a flow, which means that that flow list can get really long. I've seen organizations where it's, you know, 100, 200, 300 flows. So naming your flows like this makes it really easy to see at a glance what the flow is doing without having to click into the flow and figure everything out. I'm going to copy this and just uh, erase it. But you can imagine if I named this something weird like 
um, flow one, two, three, that that would be really unhelpful from that main flow screen. You'd have no idea what object this is running on. You would have no idea what fields it's working with. You would have no idea why it's useful for an end user or why an admin might need to change it. So uh, giving your flow a really descriptive name with both the object and you know something, a clue about the functionality is, is really useful. I'm going to press save. And that's all we're going to cover in this video about record trigger flows. We'll continue customizing it in the next video, and I will see you there.